Hello and welcome to Reinfused. So this is something that a few people have requested I did, which is a repair video. Uh, I do repair stuff, obviously I repair all my own stuff, but um, I don't always do videos on it because it's just not, I, I work in a very disorganized way when I'm repairing stuff. <laughs> so it's not always a great video, but I'm gonna try my hardest with this one. And we are gonna repair something which has been on my repair pile for quite a while. And um, yeah, I need to start shifting stuff off of that. The Atari 800XL was the last thing I took off the repair pile and got working. So that was quite a few months back. So we, yeah, we need to get some more stuff done. So now we're gonna tackle this rather interesting little chiclet based computer. Right, so here it is, the NEC PC 6001. Now, I have already opened this. Uh, I did give it a bit of a clean because it was frankly disgusting. I haven't cleaned the motherboard or any of the other boards inside, uh, but I did post them on Twitter and somebody who has more experience with this machine than me did kind of say, oh, it's probably this. And they did turn out to be correct. So I did test it after they told me that. So I do technically already know what's wrong with this, but we will still go through all of the diagnosis uh, stuff just so we can uh, show what I would have done. <laughs> I mean, it's good to know that the actual problem is something that I would have found quite quickly going down my checklist. So that's good. Uh, but we'll still go through it just so you can see how I would normally diagnose these things and we'll go through the components that uh, are incorrect. The good thing is it, it meant I was able to order the components that uh, I needed. I wasn't actually still expecting them to be here, but I ordered from Bright Components and they they, 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 they are a company that tend to over deliver and they, they delivered very, very quickly. There's no spawn, obviously, I'm a tiny channel, nobody sponsors me, uh, but I do get a lot of components from them and they are particularly quick. So uh, yeah, so we have the components to at least fix the first problem. There might be more problems though, I haven't investigated further than that. So we'll find out. Now, uh, hopefully I didn't say this in the intro. I don't know. <laughs> I'm recording the intro later. Uh, this machine has been on my repair path for quite a while. The problem it exhibits is when it's turned on, it just shows a white screen. My initial diagnosis would have been something to do with memory, but uh, it doesn't matter. We still go through the same diagnosis steps before we get to memory. Memory isn't one of the first things we check. Memory is slightly later down the chain. So we will still go through all of those diagnosis steps anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's the first thing we have to do is open it. Now it's just, uh, I think five Phillips head screws. So it's not particularly uh, exciting. So what we'll do, I think is probably do this Right there, right. Yep, five screws, uh, and then when we open it up, we'd be careful because the speaker is connected here. It's just in a small plug, so we can just move this keyboard here. It's just connected there, and we can just pull it. Not by the uh, wires, remember, pull it by the plastic part because the wires will snap or pull out. If you can't get at it, which I can't, then get some tweezers. Oh, well, some pliers. Pliers are up here. I turned up recently. Uh, so now I actually have to remember the stuff is in place rather than just everywhere. So yeah, we can just grab it with some small pliers and it will just pull off like that and there we go. So we can get rid of this. And we can also remove the keyboard because we know that's not a problem. Well, it might be a problem, but it's not the problem. Uh, and that's connected via these plugs here, which are slightly hard to get, but they, they aren't too bad. So we can just carefully prise them using the, the cables because it's a bit stronger, but don't pull them too hard. That's the question. That's the uh, key. Right, keyboard is detached. It's a very modular machine, which is going to come in useful for testing. Uh, and this is part of what we, uh, we test now and uh, explain why it's slightly different, slightly different with this machine. So the first thing you ever want to test whenever you do any vintage machines that you're not sure about is to make sure the uh, power supply is delivering the correct voltages. Now, generally of course, there'll be external power supplies. This one's an internal one, but it's also, this one is split into two parts. So this is the coil that will basically convert the AC to DC and that's actually a separate system to 
this one. Normally you'll see them on the board, mounted on the board, but no, it's completely separate. Which is kind of good, because it means we can test this stuff now separately. So this is, there's actually just one wire, although it's all cable tied together here. There's one wire that comes into this board, goes over here and clicks here. And on this, if I just see if I can get some video slightly closer. So over here, this is the supply that goes to the actual motherboard. And the good thing about this one, again, if we can get in there closer, is you can see that some of the what these things, what the cables are, are marked off. So we can see the grounds marked off there. That's the only one. But because we know that's ground, that means that we can test voltages far easier. Once you know what ground is, then you know where to put your negative terminal on your multimeter too and so therefore you can be relatively safe putting it anywhere else after that so uh, and now what we need to do then is we need to test these voltages out now the best way of doing that is we stick a probe into the ground one like that that should hold and then we want to move this to detect DC voltages and that's you usually find there's like a V for voltage and then there'll be some flat lines and some dotted lines that that designates uh, DC. If you see a curvy line, that's, that's AC voltage. So we want to turn that to DC. You can see that fine. As you can see it better there, can't you? And now, at the moment, there shouldn't be anything because the power is off. Yeah, we're getting just... Oh, we're getting 0.6 from that, that's fine. Yeah, just double more values. Now if we flip the switch and be very careful we're not anywhere near. There we go. Now I can hear a faint hum and we are getting minus 13. That's probably the minus 12 then. I got that wrong so that's lucky we checked. Um, that's fine. Minus 13 is fine. There's no load on it and it's uh, a very simple power supply so it's, it's gone over. 16 is a bit surprising. And five is normal. Okay, so we got what should be minus 12, what should be plus 12, and plus five, and yes, ground. Hmm. I mean, those voltages are slightly over the place, but yeah, it's, it's there's no load on it, so it's not surprising that it's slightly over 16. It's probably fine, to be honest. Right, anyway, let's turn that off before we forget and start doing stuff. So we can be relatively sure that the voltages coming from this board are probably okay. So that's good. So now what we want to do is we want to remove all of this extra stuff away and we want to get to the motherboard itself because we need to go and actually check that. Now, we've just powered this up, <laughs> which means that these capacitors, especially these biggie ones here, they have been sucking up some charge. And so we, don't want to be diving straight in there we're just going to give it a few seconds um, but I will say one thing now there's a reason why I'm using what isn't my best screwdriver for doing the outside case screws uh, is this one it's because this one also has a, a nut driver add-on and what I found with these screws is they're quite soft which means they strip really easily uh, but fortunately they've got a they've got a hexagonal outer which means you can just use a nut driver to open them and that's much easier although I do sometimes have to use uh, something to help push the bar around this is a very small very weedy screwdriver uh, but it's very good for very small things so there you go right let's disconnect this from the power left it in there in the hope that the ground circuit will kind of suck away some of that energy there we go
Right, so this is the motherboard, all nice and bare. <clears throat> now, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure there's no half the ground from the val from the uh, actual voltage side of things. So again, we're going to go to continuity mode. So we know because these have got. This, this is actually quite well labelled up. So if we go, right, so there we go. So that's, this is the mower board. And you can see underneath here, this tells you what each of these pins are. And these are the pins that come from the power board. So all we need to do is we need to make sure that this ground pin and any of these voltage pins aren't connected because they absolutely shouldn't be. There should be lots and lots of circuitry in between. So, we will stick our ground pin nicely there. They're kind of handy that they can, uh, you can sit them there. And we'll touch one of these. Okay, we've got nothing there. And there, oh. And there, right, so, okay, the, which one is that? That's the positive 12 volt line. Has a route straight to ground, that is not good. So that means that something is pulling, well something's failed basically and it's failed open so it's joining ground and positive 12 together. So the way you do this generally is you check all the components to see which ones are have got a path to ground that they shouldn't have. Uh, if we start around the things that are to do with the voltage, which we know these things like tantalums absolutely are then uh, that's basically where we start first. Um, now, this is the point where I actually know what the problem is. So if we just zoom in on this, because this, uh, this is good. So these are tantalums here, these. Oh. Focus, focus. You're not gonna focus better than that, are you? Come on, get some focus. There we go, that'll do, that'll do fine. So these here, tantalums. These are, they're a type of capacitor, they're just a different kind of capacitor really. Uh, these are notoriously bad for not just going wrong, but for literally exploding. Now these haven't exploded, which is, you know, unusual, but we need to test them like capacitors. And the way you test a capacitor is you see if it's holding capacity. <laughs> you see if it holds some voltage. And the way we do that is if you look at the board, go on, focus, you can do it. You see where it says C4 there? Let me see if I can get my probe in as well as doing that. There's like a positive sight symbol there. So that means that this leg here is positive. You can read it on the tantalums as well. There's usually a, there's a positive, uh, we can't read that, but anyway, there's a positive sign there, which is closer to that leg, so you know which one's positive. So what we need to do is we need to put our positive PCB probe from our multimeter over here, there we are. On to the uh, positive leg of the tantalum and the negative one onto the negative. And what should happen is, for a capacitor, is it should slowly increase in power until it gets to a certain voltage, and that means it's working. If it doesn't do that, or it just kind of stays really, really low, then there's something wrong with it. Um, there are, that's not a, it's not a perfect test, but it's a good enough test, basically. So we want to move this to the, the diode testing thing, which is actually the same thing on here, but we have to kind of turn off, there we go, turn off the, the beeper so it's not doing continuity mode anymore. And yeah, we know this is positive here, and we know this is negative here. So if we touch that, and that's not going anywhere. So again, this is positive, this is negative. Oh, there we go, we're getting something from that one, so that's good. That's got some charge in it. And this one's reversed, the positive is this side. And... Oh, yeah, it's playing around, but we've got some, we've got voltage on there. That's because we recently had this board on, so these actually have voltage still. <laughs> it's fine, we're, we're fine. Uh, and over here, 
on there. It appears to have voltage as well. Quite a lot of voltage actually. Maybe we should wait for this to to debris before we do anything. So it's a few more of these. <coughs> anyway, so we can see that some of those were holding a charge and some weren't. So those are probably suspect. So we will probably change those. Now if we also need to do a bit of a visual inspection on the motherboard. We've got some, there is some corrosion, some blatant corrosion there in the middle uh, in this area. So that's something to be concerned about. Mm, that is probably something to be concerned about. Uh, there was some minor rusting on the shielding, so that might be something to do with that. Uh, this is a relay, that's probably not that important, it's usually just used for cassette mechanism, although obviously it can cause issues with power if we, it does have a major issue. Nice big old RF uh, thing there, excellent. Uh, yeah, I mean looking, if we look at some of these capacitors, they all seem basically fine. There's no, they look especially, especially bulgy and well, maybe that one actually, that one might be a little bit bulgy. Um, uh, I don't see any residue on the board. And there's no, there's like a light, generally there's either like a, a burning paper smell for certain types of caps, or there's a fishy smell, depending on which type of cap has leaked. And I don't get either of those things from this lot. So I would suggest the caps are probably, if they're not fine, then they're okay for now. There are a whole bunch of test points here where we can put uh, probes on to make sure that the voltages are at certain points. But I think replacing those tantalums is probably the first step. So what we're going to do is, we're going to leave more noise I'm afraid, we're going to power up our desoldering gun. Yeah, so we've got some replacement uh, tantalums anyway, which um, So these are 22 microfarad at 16 volts. So 16 volts will be the minimum voltage they can handle. The 22 microfarads is the more important one. So is that, as long as that's 16 volts or above, that's fine. But that has to be on the money, unless you're going to do some clever stuff with capacitor chaining, which you don't want to do. Um, yeah, these are they're relatively cheap to get a hold of, and these should be the same value as the ones inside. I will verify when I remove one, just to make sure though. Right, so what we need to be doing, so let's turn off the multimeter for now. What we need to be doing really is adding more solder to the tantalums. This is always the fun part of working out where the components are. Uh, and we add more solder in just so it's easier for it to flow because old solder, solder has generally dried out of uh, and so it doesn't flow as well so if you add more fresh solder to it that will just help it come out easier I've saw these points by the way so there's three of these one on each one in each side and one in the middle at the bottom there and I was really concerned about what that was it looked like burn mark but in fact it turns out there's three rubber uh, spacers and I'm guessing the oil was just kind of leaked out shouldn't be a massive issue but it's uh, it was a weird one that's for sure <laughs> Right, so the soldering iron is up to the heat, so let's see if we can get these. Let's find out what the flat part is that soldering iron, there we go. So now let's just pour a load more solder in on these. <laughs> right, so we tried not to knock over everything. This is my desoldering gum. It's not great, it's a cheap one, but it does work generally. Watch out for sparks because if there is some charge still in these things, that can sometimes happen. Right. We not 
quite get that one. Can't tell. I don't think that's, I think that's loose. Excellent. We'll leave it in there for now. So until we can definitely confirm we've got polarity, correct? The worst thing you can do on a tantalum is getting the polarity wrong. Leave it on there for a few seconds just to make sure we're heating up all the way through. It did not feel like that removed all the solder. Yeah, the problem with these cheap desoldering irons is they seem to get stuck quite often. Just when you think you've learned how to do them properly, they just get stuck again. I'm hoping, are we damaging the board? I don't think we are. I think there's just dry flux on the board, that's all. Right, this one next. Yeah, so give it a bit of a, a, bit of a wiggle to make sure you're getting all the solder. Try not to scrap the board while you're doing it. That would be good. There we go. And this one. And once we've got this one, we'll, we'll just take one out just to make sure we got the voltages and stuff correct. Because certainly a favourite thing of mine is to accidentally order, get the voltage and the uh, soldering iron is desoldering iron is now blocked so I need to sort that out Okay, so now they've been desoldered. We just kind of want to gently move them out. We don't want to pull them out. If they feel like they're being they're stuck, don't don't force them through because uh, you may take a track with them. But uh, yeah, so these are desoldered, and it looks like 22 microfarads at 16 volts. So let's hope it is. Let's remove all of those, um, verifying that the polarity is indeed marked on the boards, uh, and it is, that's good. So we remove all of those, and then we can check to see if our short has gone. And if it's not, then there's some other problems. And this one, this one is not entirely free. So we're going to have to give this another burst. Fortunately, we did not turn off our desoldering gun because it takes ages to heat up. So let's just worst-case scenario, we have to add more solder to this uh, just to make it come out. But uh, that feels better. Yep, that's out. That take a pad of it because that's no no the pad is fine so it just had a huge lump of solder on it fair enough right so now that's all of those out from here there's still not all of them obviously um, but we're gonna just check to see if that was enough to solve the short to ground again turning it to continuity mode putting on the sound and it was the positive and it's gone right so we are no longer yep we are no longer 
bridge to ground. Well, that's good. <clears throat> I think we will still replace the rest of those tantalums. Because, I mean, we're in here, and if one set has started to fail, then... Oh, that one over there. Yeah, I missed that one. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get rid of the rest of the tantalums, I think. Or maybe we won't. Maybe for now we will just replace them just to make sure that the the, the uh, bridge doesn't reappear. And yeah, so anyway, so we're doing the positive negative. So there's two ways of finding out, working out the positive and negative of a tantalum. And of many components, actually. A lot of the components have the same uh, way of telling. So, if we just focus up on that. So we just focus on this tantalum. Focus, there we go. Um, you can see the markings are the same as the other one. But as you'll also see is one of those legs is longer than the other. And the longer leg is generally the positive one. But also we can see that there's a plus sign right next to that. So right next to the edge there. And that's on the same side as that long leg. So that's the two ways to tell this what side is the positive side. And you absolutely, in a system with polarized caps, you have to make sure you get them the right way. So positive side in that way. Oh, is that hole not clear? That hole, well, no, that hole is clear, it just didn't look clear. Fair enough. You want to put them in carefully. You don't want to push them down too far or you might snap the, uh, the surrounding element. So they don't have to be flush to the board. They just have to be securely in there. So now what we do is we add some solder. So what we want to do is touch the... Hang on, we have to, we're a little bit constrained with all the stuff around us. So when we are soldering, I'm soldering this point here, I'll see if I can get any closer. I'm not sure how much closer I can get. This isn't really a camera designed for this kind of thing. Okay, that's pretty close, that's all right. So what we're doing is we are touching the pad and the leg and we are warming them up and then we are bringing the solder in when it's warm. We want to put a nice judicious amount of solder in there because it's got to go through to the other side. And then we'll do it to the other leg. We'll clean up the mess we've made there on the other side later on. Uh, but there you go. Those are now nice and firmly in. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to once again just check to make sure that our the ground bridge hasn't come back because there's no guarantee it won't of course. It may be that there are some components elsewhere. There we go, we're still, doing, we're still on continuity mode. And the bridge to ground is gone. Well, I mean, I feel like testing this now. I mean, technically we probably shouldn't. We should probably just confirm there's no other issues. But um, and I absolutely should go and change some of those capacitors. There are a couple of them that are looking a little puffy. But, uh, but I'm a very impatient man. So uh, I think what we'll do is we will just quickly test it. Well. 
There we go, that's there. And we can just rest this here. Right, so what we can do is then we can just test it, see if the light comes on first. Because it might just explode, who knows? You never really know, just because we fixed one problem doesn't mean we fixed the machine, it just means we fixed a problem. It might be, now we fix that, voltage is getting somewhere else and that then goes. It's plugged in. I'm not seeing any lights. I mean, I'm not seeing any smoke either, so that's good. But we should definitely have a light. This light up here should absolutely be lighting up. Hmm. I'm not smelling anything. I'm not seeing anything particularly bad. Definitely no lights. Well. You know what? That may be because we haven't plugged everything in. There's one over here. What's that for? Which way does it go? I'm guessing pink that side. But that is a guess. Oh, that's the actual power switch. So uh, yeah, that would um, that would explain a lot. It doesn't matter particularly which way that goes because it's just a power switch. But anyway, let's try that again. We have a light. Look at that. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but there you go. We have a light. So now what we have to do is power it up, connect it to one of our machines. So we've got a machi a, a, the screen just over here. So let's focus on that and turn that on. Turn off you. Okay, so first power on connected to the screen. the wrong port okay <laughs> first power on connected to the screen yeah <laughs> um one page i don't know there we go <laughs> we have a working pc 6001 uh astonishing right well, that's brilliant so what i'll do is we will i gotta admit i wasn't entirely sure about this, this being the only thing wrong with it but there you go so what we'll do is we will button it all up uh, and then we'll do an outro there we go the 6001 is working as we can see it's a lovely green screen here we still have some more stuff to do that picture isn't great we know that there are some capacities in there that are still a little bit ropey we want to get rid of those tantalums as well. If a couple have gone, chances are they've all started going. So we will be doing all of that anyway, but you've seen the basics and that's to just show you how we would diagnose that issue. We were slightly lucked out on the fact that Lindy's Solder had already been through all this and <laughs> was kind enough to tell us, but this is still what we would have done to actually check uh, for all these problems anyway. Uh, although the visual inspection on the board is definitely something you should do first. Sometimes just smelling and looking can you can trace a problem pretty quickly we also need to clear some of that corrosion off as well which is probably caused by the rust that was on the machine but we'll clear it off anyway just in case but yeah fantastic we've got another working machine and something off of the repair pile it's been a while since that happened so excellent good work <laughs> anyway we will do more of these with some other issues we've got other stuff on the repair pile we need to to 
work out and uh, we'll try and do a better arrangement of uh, how we set these things up but yeah anyway <laughs> thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit like if you really enjoyed the video please hit subscribe if you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say then please leave it in the comments below and don't forget the bell icon business so that you get warned when we got videos because apparently subscribing to the channel isn't enough <laughs> see you next time